Since this is the first video in this word origin series, I thought I'd just give a quick explanation of its purpose and my criteria for choosing the words that are covered. The goal here is basically to explore the origins of words that have entered the English language as a result of a specific event, person, or cultural practice, rather than ones that have developed organically within the language. I'd give you an example of what I mean, but that's literally the point of this video. You'll see what I mean. And before we start, I would also like to point out that even though the title only says lesbian, the video will also cover the origins of the word sapphic as well. So really, you're getting two for one here. Anyway, as I said, in this video, we are exploring the origins of the words lesbian and sapphic, both of which are used to describe female homosexuality. If you've never heard the word sapphic before, that's not entirely surprising, since it's a little more old-fashioned. As it happens, the reason that this video covers both lesbian and sapphic is because these two words actually derive from the very same source, namely an ancient Greek woman known as Sappho of Lesbos. Now, Lesbos is the third largest of all the Greek islands, and is located in the northern Aegean Sea, off the coast of what is now Turkey. As for Sappho, she was a Greek lyric poet who lived during the late 7th century, early 6th century BCE. She was renowned throughout the Greek world, and is the only woman among the so-called Nine Lyric Poets, a group of famed poets that the esteemed scholars at the famous Library of Alexandria deemed worthy of critical study. Her works were widely admired throughout the ancient period, with Plato, the philosopher himself, even going so far as to describe her as a tenth member of the Muses, the nine inspirational Greek goddesses of literature, science, and the arts. Unfortunately for us, very little of her poetry has survived. Most of what is known is from either the fragments that have survived, or in references to her works by others. So how did Sappho become the source of not one, but two words for female homosexuality? Well, the reason Sappho has become so closely associated with female homosexuality is due in large part to the only one of her many poetic works that has survived in its entirety. Interestingly, the only reason that this particular piece has survived is because Greek historian and orator Dionysus of Halicarnassus, who lived during the reign of the Roman Emperor Augustus, quoted the poem in full in one of his own works. Anyway, the so-called Ode to Aphrodite is a lyric poem in which the speaker, one of the few occasions where Sappho actually identifies herself by name, calls on Aphrodite, the goddess of love and passion, amongst other things, for help in the pursuit of her beloved, who had so far resisted her romantic advances. Importantly, in Greece, there is only one word that explicitly identifies the sex of the individual that has caught Sappho's eye. Until the 20th century, this word had been translated in the masculine. However, in 1835, the German philologist Theodor Burke posited that the object of Sappho's love in the Ode was in fact female, with the traditional interpretation the result of the mistranslation of the word in question. Whether this was a deliberate attempt to heterosexualize Sappho, or just the kind of mistake that can often come with translating such ancient works, will never really be known. In any case, while Burke's reading was not fully accepted until the 1960s, it has since become the standard translation. However, the passion that she often displayed in what we know of her poetic works eventually became the object of ridicule among later poets and scholars, and after her death, numerous apocryphal stories were concocted about her supposedly deviant behaviour. An example that perhaps best captures the kind of stories that were perpetuated about her is one that describes how, upon being exiled from her native Lesbos because of her sexual deviancy, Sappho moved to Syracuse in Sicily and taught the apparently naive Syracusians how to hold a proper orgy, thereby corrupting them with her deviant ways. Thanks to stories like these, there was a strange juxtaposition of widespread praise for her elegant poetic style, 
and a quality of work that astounds literary scholars even today, with vitriol directed at her person of such relentlessness that her name eventually became associated with hedonism and sexual immorality, a reputation that persisted well into the Renaissance period, almost 2,000 years after her death. So great was the difference in these dual reputations that by the 3rd century CE, Roman scholars suggested that there must have been two Sapphos, one an immoral sexual creature and the other one of the greatest lyric poets to ever live. Now until the 19th century, the word lesbian with an uppercase L was used to describe something that was actually from Lesbos. However, in the mid 19th century, scholars, scientists and doctors began to examine the somewhat neglected field of female homosexuality. Male homosexuality had long held a place of particular revulsion within the Western European Christian psyche. Female homosexuality, on the other hand, was viewed by Christian scholars and prelates as unnatural but comparatively more benign than its male counterpart, and thus has received far less attention from a scholarly point of view over the centuries. In the 1850s, this began to change, and this growing interest coincided with Burke's increasingly popular new theory of Sappho's sexual orientation. It was only natural, therefore, that when searching for a term to describe female homosexuality, one is drawn to the individual who, at the time, might have been considered the original. Thus, the terms sapphic and lesbian came into being the former a more official term used initially in academia, and the latter a colloquial descriptor that eventually became the term female homosexuals used to describe themselves. However, this new use of the word lesbian has not been accepted by everyone. As one could imagine, the inhabitants of Lesbos, the real lesbians, might have a bit of an issue with their local demonym being co-opted by what I'm sure they view as the really great, just awesome, not at all offensive to their worldview, female homosexual community. In 2008, a group of lesbians, that is, lesbians with an uppercase L, took the gay and lesbian community of Greece to court in an attempt to ban the organisation from using the word lesbian in its name. And let me just emphasise that this happened in 2008 the year of our Lord 2008, Anno Domini 2008, i.e. 12 years ago. Perhaps not surprisingly, the litigation failed. The court ruled that the term lesbian does not define status or personality, and therefore the islanders had no reason to complain that they felt personally slighted by its use. In any case, given the worldwide usage of the word, I think they may have missed that boat by a fairly wide margin. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like to see more videos like this one, make sure you subscribe to the Real History channel and turn on notifications. If you simply can't wait, you can head over to the Real History website for more articles covering a broad range of history topics. The link is in the description. I would also like to thank my patrons whose support has been invaluable in getting this YouTube project off the ground. If you would also like to support Real History, you can do so by heading over to the Real History Patreon page via the link in the description. Finally, you can find Real History on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter under the handle real underscore hist. Once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.